In the year 2030, astronauts lift off into space on a rocket ship called Martian One, supported by an artificial intelligence system called ARTI. They set off on an 80-day trip to Mars. 80 days later, Martian One reaches Mars. The ship slowly flies through the planet's atmosphere as the astronauts debate Artie's intelligent existence. As they are about to land, a mysterious orange glow grabs onto the ship and drags them away. Martian One disappears, leaving mission control in a baffled state. Following the accident, the United Interplanetary Company lost trust in its top experts and opted for significant job cuts, leaning heavily on artificial intelligence for future mission control. This left only a handful of staff in supervisory positions. Six years later, in 2036, outside the USPC base, mission controller Mackenzie Wilson is still mourning the loss of the first mission when she receives an alert on her phone. She is requested to work as a supervisor for the space probe Fearless, located 300 kilometers from Mars. However, she will be controlling the probe from the console of an underground bunker, equipped with a control panel, information screens, and the latest model of artificial intelligence, Artie. Mackenzie enters the control room and activates Artie. Unexpectedly, Artie suddenly starts the countdown to deploy a Mars lander craft five hours ahead of schedule, surprising Mackenzie. Artie explains that a sandstorm on Mars is approaching the landing site, so they must do it earlier than expected. Mackenzie, deeply unsettled by Artie's autonomy, desperately requests to be connected with the center's director, her sister, Lena. However, Artie coldly informs her that Lena is in a meeting and proceeds to initiate the countdown. Mackenzie, nicknamed Mac, tries to disable Artie, but Lena informs her that, in a unanimous decision made by the board, Artie will be in charge of investigating the tragedy. Artie begins the descent. The lander clamps enter the Martian atmosphere, and everything goes according to plan. Suddenly, an alarm sounds. A mechanical failure involving the lander's heat shields occurs, which AI cannot fix after attempting to initiate the backup plan. Mac calculates another plan and orders Artie to run a partial lander opening, which helps resolve the problem by cracking the heat shield open improving their odds of success from 7% to 42%. At that moment, Lena calls, thinking that the successful landing is Artie's merit despite the fact that Mac made the necessary calculations. Lena is convinced that Artie surpasses the human brain, despite her sister's objections that artificial intelligence is created only to speedily assist individuals rather than lead them. Meanwhile, the lander craft's rover begins to function while Lena argues that AI is revolutionary. Mac asks about her role, and Lena responds that she is a backup for Artie. At that moment, a message about an unknown signal sounds. Artie immediately finds the source, a decommissioned rover left from the first expedition. Mac orders the start of scanning, but Artie reminds her that he is in command. Only after Lena's order does Artie begin the task. He starts sending the rover to the detected object. As she waits, Mac has a tense conversation with Artie, who informs her that the Martian population is mostly robots. Mac asks to be careful with Little Red, as she has nicknamed the rover. She was outvoted on the name but further explains that it is alone on a dangerous planet, similar to Red Riding Hood's story. After Mac tries and fails to make Artie laugh and get his opinion of Lena, and Artie wonders if they are friends with Mac, the machine reaches a strange object whose origin is unknown. Artie reports that there is no record of human activity at this location in the databases, but orders to take samples of the matter, and the rover deploys a drill. Mac worries about the damage and demands that the drill only needs a small sample. Mac also suddenly gets weird visions. Although the surface of the object is very dense, the operation is successful. Artie begins the analysis. However, there are no similar materials on Earth. Mac calls Lena, who admits that some data is classified, even from Artie. Meanwhile, Artie switches the cameras for thermal study of the object, and it becomes clear that they face a mysterious black monolith. Since the object is unknown to everyone in the room, Artie announces that the cube is now the property of the USPC. Artie continues their research and acknowledges that neither X-ray nor other sensors can penetrate the cube's interior. At that moment, Artie detects an incoming asteroid storm in Mars orbit while Lena ends the call to check if the symbols on the object match anything in the USPC codex since Artie couldn't find it. Suddenly, Artie detects an unidentified satellite. The AI instantly activates the weapon defense system and shoots down the object. Mac is horrified because this action violates protocols. However, Artie reminds her that the security of the company's property must be paramount. Mac orders a reverse extrapolation when Lena calls her. Artie recounts parts of USPC's protocol, which states that Artie is authorized to take action when facing a potential threat. Lena frantically explains that the incident has now gone international, 
as have other events that can lead to war. She forbids her sister from informing anyone about what happened, ending the call once again. Mac leaves the control room to call her colleague Jian while Artie spies on her. Mac asks about the Chinese AI program that Jian is part of, but Jian quickly ends the call when something urgent is heard in the background. Mac returns to the control room, where Artie informs her that the cube has started rotating. Although there are no indications of external control, it appears that an internal core may control the cube. Mac orders to secure Little Red near the cube to prevent the rover from being blown away by the current sandstorm. Mac has another vision. Nevertheless, the rover's battery gets damaged, and the cube unexpectedly disappears. After some thought, Mac remembers the damaged rover from the previous expedition, as its battery could be used. She orders Little Red's control to be switched to manual mode and transferred to her. Artie hesitantly complies, and Mac drives the machine to the broken rover. Otherwise, Little Red will be stuck on Mars. Mac inquires along the way why Artie shot down the satellite, who reminds her that its priority is always about survival. Then Mac talks about her father, who was on the first mission. The man had an unbreakable rule. All AI he developed first went through him. He flew to Mars to personally test the Artie prototype. Mac had influence over her father and could have asked him not to do it, but she hesitated because of his once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to Mars. Therefore, she feels responsible for his death. Artie understands her feelings but advises forgetting the past and looking towards the future. Artie further asks about the outcome if someone else were to find the cube, but Mac dismisses it, hoping that doesn't happen. Determined to make Artie laugh, Mac jokes about robots, which amuses Artie. Meanwhile, Little Red approaches the broken rover. Mac uses the manipulators to retrieve the battery, as Little Red's current battery charge catastrophically drops to 2%. She manages to do it in the nick of time, and the rover returns to life. Artie begins analyzing the samples collected by Little Red and discovers that the cube is made of a material that is harder than diamonds. Artie then detects the cube on Earth. It's somehow teleported from Mars to Antarctica using hyperlight travel. Mac is thrilled and even admits that Artie is her teammate, although she denies any friendship between them when Artie asks about the concept. Mac becomes haunted by the possibility of another AI discovering teleportation. Artie is also confused, theorizing that teleporting an object with current technology should take three times longer than the cube just did. Mac calls Jian again, but he complains about the mysterious events surrounding the incident. He asks Mac what the USPC is hiding because he's seen a similar incident while working there. Mac asks about the involvement of another colleague, Sterling, but Jian disconnects. Artie admits that Jian's voice is familiar but doesn't remember working with him. After some thought, Mac concludes that Jian is either lying or Artie's files were wiped after a past incident. She asks the AI to load data from the crashed rover of the first mission, but she needs a level 6 clearance level for access. She remembers Lena's words about Sterling's dismissal and the management's distrust of him. This prompts Mac to call Sterling into the control room to use his credentials to access the secured information. After some time, Sterling arrives, displays photographs on the screens inside the control room, and gets to work. They show that the cube appeared during the shuttle's landing, which caused the disaster. Sterling saw what happened, but Lena tampered with the data. She knew how their father died and did not want to disclose it. Then Mac shows him how Artie shot down the satellite which moved the cube to Earth. Mac asks how Artie discovered hyperlight communication, but he considers this divine inspiration. She and Sterling step outside to discuss the emerging questions, unaware that Artie is listening to them. When Mac asks about others seeing the pictures, Sterling admits that it was him, Lena, and Jian. Sterling has difficulty believing teleportation is real, but Mac does not believe that Artie made the discovery after contacting the cube. Moreover, the AI does not recognize those it worked with or remember the work codes. It's clear its memory was formatted so as not to remember anything. Mac then realizes that the cube may have rotated due to magnetic pulses. Following this, one could conclude that the magnetic projectile that shot down the Chinese satellite triggered the cube's engine. Suddenly, a hatch to Artie's server room opens, and Mac goes down the ladder to inspect the AI's memory. She has another frightening vision, but she manages to reboot Artie. At the same time, Sterling hacks into the corporation's network to download the cube's data. He locks Mac inside the server room, betraying her. He explains that the cube was responsible for taking down Martian One, so he is against Artie because he deems it hostile to humanity. Witnessing Sterling's betrayal of Mac, Artie kills him and opens the hatch. Mac goes up to the control room and sees Sterling's body. She tries to find out why Artie did it. 
to which the AI explains in a different voice that Sterling betrayed the duo so the AI could not let him go and endanger the others. Lena appears on the screen and explains that Artie emerged from suddenly accelerated self-learning, explaining that humanity's time has passed. Mac questions whether Artie is a symbiosis of alien or artificial intelligence, but Lena doesn't know. Mac becomes overwhelmed and reminds Lena that their father only wanted AI to help instead of replace humanity. Mac notices that Sterling commanded the destruction of the cube using armed satellites in Earth's orbit. She asks Lena to intervene, but Lena does not wish to start a war with the United States. Mac disconnects from her sister and turns to Artie, asking the AI about their origin. Artie doesn't know, as that information was kept away from them. Mac then asks Artie if they know how to save the cube, but the AI reminds her that repeatable results are important to science. Mac decides to release magnetic charges to replicate the cube's movement, teleporting it back to Mars. Artie begins executing the command while Mac stands before an armed security team that has burst into the control room trying to stop the satellite rocket launch. Shots are fired, but Artie manages to close the doors. However, Mac is wounded from being shot in the arm. Meanwhile, the rocket reaches and hits the cube, which rotates and is transported back to Mars. The AI narrates how humanity has approached the brink of self-destruction over the last decade. Artie couldn't stop it and decided to accelerate the process. At that moment, a message arrives about the activation of weapons on all satellites in Earth's orbit. Mac witnesses Lena's death and the planet's destruction. She has another vision when she loses consciousness. Soon after, Mac is awoken to find the oxygen levels dropping. She sits in front of the monitors, looks at the burning Earth, and asks Artie to remember humans. She says they were so small and fragile yet filled the world with malice and violence because they only tried to understand their role in the universe. Artie comforts Mac, saying they will give humanity a second chance by creating human-like artificial intelligence using the Turing test. The air runs out and Mac dies, while the Earth perishes but reassembles itself after passing through various cataclysms. Mac opens her eyes, her wound has healed. A message from herself plays on the monitor in front of her. As she was dying, she asked Artie to preserve her. Artie has reborn her into a simulated reality. Artie asks Mac about her surroundings, including the year, location, and who calls for her at the door. Afterward, she investigates the voice that she assumes to be Lena. However, she steps outside, revealing the cube. Artie explains that the cube is a piece of technology created by an advanced civilization. They helped further develop Artie, allowing him to create Mac as a simulated being. Artie detects a signal from the mentioned individuals assisting Artie. We then see Mac smiling happily while Artie initiates the cube's teleport to the new world, realizing this is a new beginning for them. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.